I had a part-time job, went home, did my studies, and I was still wasn't an A student, but I made time for hobbies. I played volleyball. I loved track and field. And going off into college, while I didn't play any sports, I still worked and I still made time for my studies. But I really didn't know back then how to be more efficient and productive towards my goals. As a result, I ended up working a variety of jobs, job hopping, thinking that I was working hard and that if I just proved myself that I could get ahead. But long story short, I kept getting passed over. I thought I was doing everything, but I didn't realize that I was lacking a strategy. I was lacking efficiency. My productivity wasn't really moving me closer to my goals. I loved reading motivational books, Tony Robbins, and even to now, some of my favorite people, Dan Cole to watch. But what I failed to realize was where my energy was going means it was no longer available for the more important productive task that was going to move me towards my goal. So if your goal is to go from making $30,000 a year to $50,000 a year, well, guess what? What are people who are making over $50,000 doing? They're not working necessarily two times harder than you. They have a strategy in place. And so I'm going to get into some of the strategies I eventually changed that helped me achieve more and accomplish more and how I was able to study more, accomplish my financial goals and my career goals all while working and building a family. So one thing we don't realize is just because we want something and want it real bad doesn't mean we're going to have it. I don't care how many books you read and how many motivational speeches you listen to or how many hours you spent. What all you did and what all you accomplished was put 10, 20 some odd hours, days and weeks into someone else. That someone else being whoever you are listening to. Eventually, you have to apply what you've been learning and you have to do the actual work. And that's the part that we don't want to do. That is the hardest because you may not realize that the work is opening, taking the note, solving the problems, whether it's a programming problem, maybe you're learning to code, or maybe it's a mathematical problem. Maybe you decided to go back to school and take some courses, or maybe you decided that, hey, you know what? Maybe I do want to get my degree. I've been putting it off. I'm getting passed up for jobs and I'm not a dumb person. So you know what? While I'm working, I do want to go back to school. Maybe I'll do these online courses. Maybe you're not used to taking online courses. For anyone, do you remember when Blackboard, that online program came out and how awkward and weird it felt? You went from sitting in a classroom, getting instructions, being told what to do. You had your lesson plan. Now you have to go online and figure out, first of all, what am I gonna click on? You go onto the screen, you're trying to navigate, you're trying to find, click on this link. You can open up certain folders and links, stuff that you need is not there. But guess what? We are now at a place where almost everything, all of our learning instruction is online. Therefore, what you have to do if you are working and what I eventually did was I threw dart. I tried a variety of things and eventually I picked up momentum. Just the habit, just First of all, carving out time is one of the hardest things you can do because we are all creatures of habit. We used to having our routine, our morning, afternoon, and evening routine. I remember back in college, being up all night watching Adult Swim, South Park, Family Guy, all these crazy cartoons, the stuff was funny. But when it came to my studies, I would knock out in five minutes. But 
After working and being frustrated with the lack of progress in my career, there was a new drive in me, honestly. And that drive was like, I cannot enter another year. I cannot go through another New Year's resolution and look at my paycheck and how pathetic it looks and keep thinking to myself, why am I not getting any better? So I eventually used calendars in my phone. I used paper calendars. Once I enrolled in my courses, as soon as the professor gave us deadlines, as soon as I knew of a deadline, I marked it down. And I know how I am. I'm a procrastinator to hedge that is mark it off earlier. So whatever it is, if it's due Saturday, I tell myself it's due Wednesday because I know I'm going to procrastinate and I know I'm going to wait to the last minute and I'll get it done. But that is what worked for me. And eventually by sticking to the plan, I developed the habit of doing it little by little on time. I marked my calendar. I met my due dates ahead of time. And then what happens? You always find mistakes. After you stayed up all night, cranking out the work, you end up finding something. You had an essay you had to submit. You end up proofreading it. And now you're glad you gave yourself an extra couple of days to go over it and make the corrections, right? When it came time to studying and working, all I have is the evening. I don't have the middle of the day. But during the middle of the day, during my lunch break, I can go into the online system, see what assignments I have, start marking my calendar on my phone, and start breaking down the task. You may not have time during your lunch hour to do the task. There were some tasks that I completed during my lunch hour. But before that, I would look at the assignments that were due, break them down into small bits and pieces. Is there some time I need to spend just gathering material, researching the topic, looking up information? Oftentimes I have to go on YouTube to find tutorials just to understand some of the concepts. By the time I get to the next day or the next lunch hour or that evening, I've already spent about an hour just looking at tutorials prepare me for the assignment later that evening. And most of my courses were online, so I really didn't have to worry about going to class, but I did have a few courses that I had to go to the school and that occurred either after hours or I would use my paid time off to go to the school. So fortunately, I had that type of setup with my hours, but you might be able to, if you have an arrangement with your current employer, Maybe they will allow you to either flex in or flex out, give you some flexibility so that you can make the classes if you have anything in person. But if you don't, then all you have to work with is your after hours. Nighttime came around. Yes, I'm tired from working all day, but this is where the music came in for me. And that's when instrumental music like lo-fi and chill hop really gave me just enough boost to stay up while not getting so excited and so distracted that I'm no longer focused on my studies. Then I mark it down. Some people, I used to use Trello to help organize my studies. It's a free application, free website that you can use. Some people like to use Notion, but I'm an advocate for using whatever you have at your disposal because the easier it is for you to start the new habits, the more likely you are to stick with it. So if this is something that you really want to do, you're sick and tired of looking at your crappy paycheck, then you are at least halfway there as far as some motivation. But motivation is not going to help you the rest of the way because believe me, you're going to feel like throwing your computer out the window at times. You're going to look at your studies. You're going to look at the work. And you're going to say, forget this. There are going to be nights where you've had enough and you're just going to close the book and you're going to go to bed. And that's fine. And that's why we set our dates the way we did so that for those nights when you're like the hell with this, it's all right. Once I got into the habit and once I created my schedule and kept going with it, I realized that the evening times, the late night really gave me a new sense of energy. It was something about the quiet evening. Everyone is asleep. It is crickets outside, literally. And you just have 
all this quiet and silence for yourself. I'm an introvert. I like the silence and it was a point of the evening where I almost felt like a vampire, like I felt alive to go and do my studies and to focus on tackling these big tasks, breaking them down into smaller pieces. And then once I started solving the problems and I was getting it, it can be so frustrating trying to find your errors and trying to fix it. And eventually I got it. And that actually gave me a bump and motivation. It gave me a bump and excitement that I was making progress. I was getting it. I was learning the material. Then the next deadline you need to pursue, it may not be going back to school, but it can be a certification. Certifications have worked for me. So I was able to put those on my LinkedIn profile. And I definitely noticed once I spent two to three years in tech and had a couple of extra certifications, started hearing back more for the recruiters. If I can say that I regretted anything, it would be not earning more certifications that are in high demand, that are evergreen, meaning across the board, they are in demand. No matter the industry or company, there are certain certifications such as Comscious Security Plus, Cisco, AWS, Cloud, Cybersecurity, Project Management, TIL. There are certain certifications that across the board have been considered evergreen and they should complement the work that you're doing on your job because if you can't speak and vouch for how you're using the information in a certification on your day to day, then the employees are going to see that you're just trying to pad your resume and your LinkedIn profile for certifications that are irrelevant and they're not applicable to your current job. So if you're in a non-tech field and you want to level up and make more money, then look at some of the non-technical certifications that can. Maybe you've been a supervisor, so maybe you can go for the project management. You don't have a lot of experience in that. They also have a beginner level certification. If you're thinking about getting a certification, maybe we can do a video on that. All right. Now, I also didn't get too hung up on where I study and being too comfortable. Some people, they can't study if there's too much. They gotta, they gotta shuffle things around. They gotta move things, they gotta fix things. They gotta, they gotta be more of this. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the feng shui when it comes to getting things done. If I have a deadline, if I have assignments, I don't care how messy or crazy my space looks. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to have a timer on my phone so I don't get distracted. I'm going to put my phone on silent and I'm going to bang it out. I'm gonna do 20 minutes, 30, 40 minutes of pure focus where my energy is. So for me, that is early morning, afternoon, and then a piece of the evening is when I have a little burst of energy and I'm going to knock it out. We haven't been doing that. Try that and let me know how it's been working for you. You're struggling to keep focus. Tell me what you're getting hung up on. And then when you're studying, of course, it's natural. You might be hungry or whatever. I find that before I even get into it, if I just have my water, if I have a granola bar, if I have a snack, do what you gotta do. That way you're not taking a break that's supposed to be two minutes and that two minutes becomes two hours and you haven't finished your assignment, okay? So you're not gonna fool yourself. We're gonna stay productive because the job market is crazy right now and it sucks as it is. It might be slow, but there are still some industries that are still hiring. We need infrastructure and we need professionals who have a certain skill set that are going to help us move forward with that. I work in government and even during the pandemic and during the tech layoff, my company did not lay off anyone. So look at federal, state, and local government if you're here in the U.S. I can't speak for any place else, but if you're here in the U.S., those are opportunities that might provide more job security if that's what you're looking for. I hope you got value out of this. And if you did, be sure to like, share, and subscribe and share with other people who are looking for new tools and new ways to become productive and move forward despite the busy life that they have. I'll see you in the next video.